If there's one thing I think all NBA fans can agree on, it's that uh, Kyrie Irving um, is very controversial or polarizing, whatever you want to say, whether you uh, love him or hate him, whether you appreciate what he does or you don't, everybody has an opinion on Kyrie Irving, especially as of late. And his recent antics with threatening to leave the Nets, then opting into a contract with a really cryptic message. Um, yeah, it's the latest in a long line of stuff Kyrie's done that leaves pretty well everybody, including myself, scratching our heads. I mean, when he's on the court, he is one of the greatest talents we've ever seen. He's a threat to score 50 points at any time. He hit one of the biggest shots in NBA history. But off the court, um, you can't go a week or two without Kyrie saying something that is just baffling and confusing. And uh, we're not going to analyze that today. No, today I am looking at four different specific decisions Kyrie Irving has made in his career, which have negatively or positively in some cases affected his career. I'm not going to do a deep dive onto Kyrie's conspiracy theories or try to analyze his psyche. Just, uh, just these four examples of super controversial decisions, whether you agree or not with them, that have affected Kyrie's career. Now let's get into it. Kyrie Irving played six total seasons with the Cleveland Cavaliers after being drafted first overall at the 2011 NBA Draft. In those six seasons, he'd average about 22 points, six assists per game, while making four all-star appearances, one all-NBA team, winning rookie of the year, and of course, an NBA championship in 16. In addition to his on-court prowess, Irving would sign a five-year, $94 million extension during the summer of 2014, which would eventually make him the fourth highest paid point guard in the NBA when it kicked in. During the 20. 16-17 NBA season, his last in Cleveland, Kyrie had the fifth highest selling jersey league-wide. His presence as one of the faces of the league stretched beyond kids in his jersey too, as in 2012 he first appeared as Uncle Drew in a Pepsi Max ad campaign, a campaign that would become so popular he'd eventually lead his own Uncle Drew movie in 2018. All of this is to point out, and uh, I was honestly surprised looking back at it, Kyrie Irving was a star, both on and off the court during his tenure in Cleveland. He was big time. It's also to point out the sheer shock that was felt across the NBA, when in July 2017, just a month after the Cavs had lost to the Warriors in the NBA Finals, Kyrie Irving requested a trade from Cleveland. Now the timeline plays out as follows. On July 18th, Kyrie would tell Sports Illustrated regarding the Cavs offseason, quote, I understand we're in a very peculiar place. We just have to, you know, make sure that all our pieces are aligned first and then we go from there. On July 21st, a trade request from Kyrie was made official news with Brian Windhorse of ESPN writing, quote, The request came last week and was made to Cavaliers owner Dan Gilbert. Irving has said that he wants to play in a situation where he can be more of a focal point and that he no longer wants to play alongside LeBron James. In case you guys forgot, there were a lot of people doing victory laps at this time because it was finally confirmation that star players didn't want to play with LeBron James. With that being said, however, Kyrie's line of thinking didn't compute with many, because in three seasons prior to LeBron returning to Cleveland, the Irving-led Cavs sported a 78-152 and record, with Kyrie averaging a shade under 21 points a game. During the three seasons in which Kyrie and LeBron joined forces, the Cavs sported a 161-85 and record, with Kyrie scoring a shade over 22 points a game. ESPN opined at the time that Irving was frustrated with how much James dominated the ball on offense, but also pointed out that the point guard led Cleveland in shots per game during the 16-17 season and scored a career high in points. ESPN would also highlight Kyrie's disappointment that LeBron received preferential star treatment from the organization, similar to that of John Wall in Washington and Dame Lillard in Portland, but that he didn't also receive those benefits. However, ESPN pointed out the fallacies in those complaints, as John Wall was reportedly envious of Irving's massive Nike deal, while Lillard never reached the playoff heights of Kyrie in Cleveland. People are rarely eager to jump on LeBron's side of any perceived debate. But Kyrie Irving has done such a fine job of stirring the pot amongst basically every NBA fan over the last few years. I'm genuinely curious how you guys feel about Kyrie leaving LeBron in the Cavs now with five years of hindsight. A month after his request for a trade was made public, Kyrie Irving was indeed traded to the Boston Celtics, the beginning of a new LeBronless chapter in his career. 
Kyrie's first season in Boston would actually go very well. He scored over 24 points a game in 60 games during the 17-18 season, but unfortunately would miss the entire playoffs with nagging knee issues. Ironically, without their leading score, the Celtics would gallivant through to the East Finals, eventually losing to LeBron and the Cavs in Game 7. With a healthy Kyrie and Gordon Hayward ahead of the 18-19 season though, the Celtics were viewed amongst the heavy favorites to win the championship, actually ranked number 2 in betting odds behind the Warriors in a lot of different places. Additionally, prior to the season, <sighs> Kyrie Irving would announce to the crowd at a fan event that he planned to re-sign with the Celtics following the season if they would have him. Uh, it, to be fair, it, it is possible the Celtics' official account misquoted Kyrie or, or something. Oh, yeah, nope, he said it. Uh, he, he, he said, he said a word for word. Yeah. And it wasn't just that public announcement that he had intentions to sign long-term with Boston. It was followed up with insane doubling down. Like when he told media quote, I do have a dream of putting my number 11 in the Raptors one day. If I'm so blessed to do that, a lot of great players have come before me, but to throw my name in Boston Celtics tradition and history is something I'm glad to do and plan on doing my guy. It had been one season. The decision from Kyrie to vehemently pledge allegiance to Bean Town aged badly in almost record fashion. As just four months later, he'd tell media, quote, at the end of the day, I'm gonna do what's best for me in my career. I don't owe anyone shit. And when asked about whether his mindset about free agency had changed, he simply replied, ask me July 1st. Again, it had been four months. Despite the swirling drama regarding his upcoming free agency, Kyrie actually had a fantastic season in 2018-19. He posted a career-high 6.9 assists per game and made second-team All-NBA. However, the Celtics failed to make good on Bill Simmons' projection that they'd win 67 games, finishing fourth in the East with a 49-33 record. After swiftly sweeping the Pacers in the first round of the playoffs, the Celtics booked a matchup with the rising in power Milwaukee Bucks, who of course were led by newly minted league MVP Giannis Ondetta. Kumpo. The teams would split the first two games in Wisconsin before returning to Massachusetts, where Giannis would drop 32-13-8 in a Bucks Game 3 win, leaving everyone at the Garden yelling, you think you're better than me? With their season hanging in the balance in Game 4, Kyrie Irving would infamously try to guard Giannis 1v1 on a number of possessions, something that wasn't lost on Twitter. Boston Sports Journal would actually do an entire breakdown on the head-scratching decisions from Irving, with multiple examples of Kyrie trying to take over duties against Giannis in the fourth quarter. It was honestly so wild to revisit. Oh, and uh, yeah, uh, Giannis would finish that game four with 39 points, 16 rebounds, and the Bucks would take a commanding 3-1 series lead. I'm not trying to act like Kyrie intentionally torpedoed the Celtics season by trying to pick up Giannis 1v1 for all 48 minutes of the game, but it's clear there was an insane level of dysfunction in the relationship between player and team and moments like game four highlighted that. Kyrie also shot very poorly on offense throughout the series and would vow to media following game three, quote, I don't think you'll see another eight for 22, in reference, of course, to his field goal shooting. In game four, Kyrie would shoot seven for 22, and game five, an elimination game, he shot six for 21. So, I mean, I guess he told the truth about no more eight for 22s. By the time the Celtics' tumultuous season had come to a close, it was a foregone conclusion that Kyrie was leaving. And he did. He signed a four-year deal with Brooklyn to join close friend Kevin Durant in NYC. Kyrie would play just 20 games during his first Nets season in 1920, but with his return to health and that of Kevin Durant, the Nets were viewed as strong title contenders heading into the 2021 season. That status was further solidified when, in January 2021, Brooklyn invested a haul of assets to trade for James Harden from Houston. The Nets' big three looked unstoppable as they rolled past Boston in the first round of the playoffs, but with Within seconds of their second round series with Milwaukee tipping off, Harden would suffer a hamstring injury. In a pivotal game four, Kyrie himself would be felled to a nasty ankle injury that would keep him sidelined for the remainder of the playoffs. As we know, Kevin Durant's big toe would cause the Nets to eventually lose in seven games. 
Prior to the 21-22 season, Nets GM Sean Marks announced that Kyrie Irving wouldn't be able to play or practice with the team due to New York City COVID-19 vaccine mandates, revealing that Kyrie indeed had decided not to get vaccinated. Marks explicitly stated at the time that the Nets, quote, will not permit any member of our team to participate with part-time availability. Just two months later, however, the Nets would completely walk that stance back, welcoming Kyrie in as a part-time player in large part due to ongoing COVID and injury issues on the roster. It took them only two months to change their tune on the Kyrie situation completely. GM Marks would say of the decision to let Kyrie return, quote, we arrived at this decision with the full support support of our players, but maybe not all of them. See, in February 2021, James Harden would kinda sorta maybe demand a trade from the Nets. I mean, it wasn't a formal request or anything, don't be silly, just a specific sharing of feelings that included the desire to be on the Philadelphia 76ers. <sighs> As the unofficially official Harden trade request was made public, Jake Fisher of Bleacher Report would write, quote, Harden has been vocal to Nets figures and close contacts alike about his frustrations regarding Kyrie Irving's part-time playing status, leaving Harden to shoulder majority of the offensive burden during Brooklyn home games. Joe Varden of The Athletic would add, following the consummation of Harden's trade to the 76ers, quote, Irving was ready for Harden to move on to. When Irving heard Harden was in fact hoping to be traded, a well-placed source says he was eager eager to see it come to fruition. Harden would be traded to Philly, and Kyrie would play just 29 total games during the 21-22 season. As we know, Brooklyn would eventually be swept in round one by the Boston Celtics. And here we are, a truly remarkable five-year stretch of head-scratching, often bewildering actions and decisions made by Kyrie Irving. Whether you agree or not with some or all or none of Kyrie's decisions, leaving LeBron in the Cavs, not getting vaccinated, trying to guard Giannis 1v1, honestly, none of that really matters. For better or worse, it's now a trend with Kyrie Irving. He absolutely marches to the beat of his own drum. A cliche that I'm not sure has ever described an NBA player more accurately.